I'm back with the mindfulness data where we've got the before and after measurement of stress and in the other video I looked at doing a paired t-test which is a completely acceptable way of looking at the data. It's also possible that you could look at a linear regression and it would you'd probably do it a little bit differently from how you would do a normal linear regression because you'd be interested in something slightly differently. So I'll show you how this works and how you can use it if you're interested. So because we've got these two continuous variables, we can plot them with a scatter plot. We'll just reset that and drag it in. So that would be a scatter plot. Probably we would say we would be thinking about predicting their after stress based on their before stress. So we would put the post value on the y-axis and the pre-stress on the x-axis and press OK. So what we can see here is that there is this trend upwards telling us that the people who were the most stressed before doing the mindfulness program were also the most stressed after doing the mindfulness program. But obviously we're interested in was there an overall reduction in that stress and equally the people who were the least stressed at the start were also the least stressed at the begin, um, at the end. So in order to be able to interpret these results we're going to do something a little bit different with our regression. If I go to analyze regression and linear we're going to try and predict their post value based on their pre-value but we're not actually so concerned about the intercept in this case what we're interested in is the slope or the relationship with the pre and the post and if you do want to run a regression like this where you're interested just in the slope you can ask it not to fit an intercept or the constant so we've got this tick box here for include constant in the equation now you could include it in there and still interpret the results but it's actually a little bit easier in this case if you don't include it so I'll press continue and so what we get now with this equation is that because there's no constant this is essentially telling us that our post stress is equal to about 0.6 times their pre-stress so whatever their pre-stress was their post-stress is about 60 percent of that so that's a reduction of 40 percent so if that's the kind of statement you want to make this is a tool you can use to do that and one of the reasons that it's convenient sometimes to think about these paired observations in this way rather than with a paired t-test is because it's easier to extend that regression to control for other variables so if we wanted to control for um, I don't know if we've got gender and age and de basic demographics here. If we want to control for other variables we can extend this to a general linear model and that's quite easy to do. So we go to analyze general linear model univariate. Our dependent variable would be the same, the pre, um, sorry, the post. Our covariate would become would be our independent variable, which is our, their pre-stress. So we're trying to predict their post-stress. And this is where, if you had demographic information, you might want to control for those factors. Uh, in this case, we might want to control for based on whether or not they did some of the activities, which might be, um, did they keep a journal? And... Well, we could stick a few in and see if they're significant, I suppose. I don't actually know what a lot of these are. Um, probably breathing exercises. So I'm just going to do a custom model. I'm not going to look at interaction effects. I'm just going to look at the main effects. Continue. And so actually looking at this model, it looks like the stress afterwards, <laughs> so none of the particular activities appear to be significant, um, but it is significant really related to their pre-stress. Obviously you could keep doing a bit more investigation here to see if any of these particular activities mattered in themselves or if it was just the overall course. Um, 
or perhaps even the placebo effect which contributed to the drop in perceived stress. So you can look at these paired observations using a paired t-test but you could also look at them using a linear regression if you want to. Um, if it's appropriate you still have to go through that process of checking the residuals and checking that you don't have an increase in variance, um, strong outliers, that you've got a linear relationship etc. And if that's suitable you then could extend that to a general linear model if that was um, sensible for your data.